he is the man himself, Thomas Love, or Tom to all the uh, Americanos. Hey, Joe, man. I'm I'm doing great. Thank you. How are you doing? <laughs> I, I got the I got the coffee. I'm good. You're having I'm lunch. I'm with water. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're with Rakia, water, so we're, not, <laughs> we're not going to get crazy like the last time I saw you. So uh, yeah. Uh, but so the la last time you and I sp like spoke was obviously for Brotherhood and Unity. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we did that interview, and I think that went pretty well. Uh, I enjoyed that time, and then time before that, we actually were face to face we met each other for the first time in croatia in your home your home country right yeah it was like almost three years ago two and a yeah, half years, three ago. years yeah yeah because i was that in the time fall? flies man time flies yeah crazy yeah that's yeah. fast that's fast yeah so uh so what's been going on you've got something new in the works that i know yeah. that i i you know when we first met you were telling me all about how like you love the African campaign and DAC and you love you know, all the all the ac action in the desert from World War II and you were designing a war game for it, but a digital war game. Mm -hmm. And I was like, ah, you know, guys, guys, everyone's everyone's making a game and that's great. I'm super excited for you, but you know, let's see it when it's ready. Well, is it? It sounds like it's nearly ready. Well, it's an in it's in beta phase, yeah, beta yeah. phase. How do you want to yeah. call it? It's. Yeah. Uh, most of the scaffolding and, and core mechanisms are there. And I, I play that game regularly. Practically now we are just brushing it. We are playing it, testing it, balancing, and, and uh, doing that AI, AI, balancing yeah, yeah. until it's yeah. really perfect. But game is there. As if you've seen you've seen the trailer, what you've seen is the actual game footage. AI playing against AI and uh, just capturing some interesting moments from the game. Oh, very cool, very yeah. cool. Because so, when we when he talked first, that was 2018, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's when I was just starting. So two and a half years after that, here we are mm -hmm. today. Really. So let's talk a little bit about the. Uh, uh, John Connor is here. Hey, John, you, I think you're first in. You may not be your first to comment, and there's Hex to Hex. Boy, what's up? He's another blogger. You need to check this stuff out, Hex to Hex, if, you're, if you play any PC games at all. Hello, um, John. When, Hello, Hex to Hex. Yeah, when it comes out, and I, I'm horrible with names. I, everyone's got this tag, right? You know, they're like Hex to Hex. Yeah. Billy Bob's War Game Shed, and I, I forget Hex to Hex. Sorry, otherwise so what do you want to know? Yeah, so no, so I'm actually more curious though. I want to uh, uh, about the beginning because what got you excited about World War II in Africa, first of all, right? Uh, that to, to make you want to build a game, like building a PC game is freaking hard, dude. Yeah, uh, based on my experience, it's I think eight to ten times uh, harder than making a tabletop game. I mean, right. it takes much so much more effort because uh, there's so much more technical knowledge and, and artistic knowledge and, and sound effects and everything that needs to be put in a game like mm -hmm. this to get to the same level approximately of, of, of quality and, and detail as you would in tabletop game. If you need to change anything into the rule book, you just <clears throat> cross a sentence and write another <clears throat> one and test it. Yeah. Right. And for a computer game, you need to program, to debug, to do ton of other things but i wanted to do a world war ii war game since i was a, a little kid because when i was seven years old and that was in 1984 well a long time ago i played the game on my computer that was zx spectrum back there a small black one oh, british yeah, okay. P british british computer and we had the tapes uh, and i bought a tape with uh, with uh, strategy games and one of them was called tobruk by what was the company back then S ssi i think strategic yeah, SSI, simulations right. yeah yep. yeah yep. and that game i played it i was seven years old against a computer and it really <laughs> stuck into my head from back then and it was uh, practically battle of gazala line Right. And I was playing with 19th Light Division and 15th Panzer and 21st Panzer, and I was seven years old. And now, all these years afterwards, when I started to go back into war gaming, it was like 10, 15 years ago, I, I started looking for games like that. And that's when I found OCS Deck 2 or 
the um, Africa, which was the prequel, like from SCS series, and yes. and the beautiful, beautiful low counter game like No Retreat, North Africa, and mm -hmm. games like this. And little by little, I started buying books, more books, a ton of books, and reading about it and going deeper and deeper. And then, in 2006, starting making a game on the topic. And we did it for like six years, me and a group of friends. And uh, we also got to the better release phase, but then, I don't know, it all fell apart. That was in 2011 or 12. It all right. fell apart because we, we did so much mistakes. Yeah? We didn't use a, a game engine, we created our <laughs> own. We did our own graphical assets and sound, and it was right. much harder to do all those things back then. Yeah. So the project fell apart, and that's where it stopped. And then a couple of years after, after my entry into the tabletop gaming, and uh, after trying all this with Brotherhood and Unity, I said, why wouldn't I try again? And this mm -hmm. time, I think I really got the right stuff. Well, cool. Now, so, uh, and your your uh, do you feel like the the board war games you've played have influenced your design at all? Definitely, yeah. absolutely. Because uh, before my entry into into war gaming again, somewhere fifteen years ago, I was mostly influenced by games like. Sid Meier's Gettysburg or Close Combat or games like that. And um, after starting wargaming on the tabletop, I became more and more influenced by the Hex and Counter war games, the ones I, I told you about. And yep. th I think that was the key behind uh, the change <clears throat> of the, the mechanics in my game. Because initially, my game was also real time, but the the way of playing was more like uh, uh, games like StarCraft. Yeah, But after playing Hex and Counter games for so much, I started to implement those mechanics into my game, and I saw that they are very good fit. Yeah, because if yeah. you combine Hex and Counter with mm -hmm. real time, and you still use that same Hex and Counter ideas of, of movement, of combat, of combat results tables, of terrain, of logistics, of everything. But if you make it real time, if you do that that big leap of paradigm, that paradigm shift, you really get something new, which I think is really interesting. And, and I think it would be good to share with others. Yeah. Very cool. OK, now, so <clears throat> from a technical aspect, uh, you mentioned early on that your first effort, you created all of your own graphical assets and your own engine and all the rest of it. But this time around, you're using, are you using the Unity engine or? Yeah, you, it's yeah. Unity engine, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, cool, all right. So so that's kind of the, the go-to game, uh, gaming platform development. Now, platform. now you have around five or six uh, uh, big ones, but two of the biggest ones are on Unreal Engine and the yeah. Unity Engine. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I did my small. prototype prototype uh, in, in just six or seven weeks. Right. It's so uh, yeah. uh, available and easy to use that you can do <clears throat> such a thing in a short period of time. Did you try any of the other engines? No, I didn't, because I really studied beforehand uh, which one will I choose. I do that for a living on my day job. I do uh, uh, much of the research and choosing of new technologies, so I did really study what were the pros and cons for each engine. And I mainly choose Unity because the code behind it is C Sharp, and oh, I yeah. have a lot of knowledge of using C Sharp. <laughs> on the other hand, uh, Unreal is on C++. So that was one of the key points yeah. that took yeah. me to this one. Yeah. Okay. So debug for you is a little easier. Probably just got a deeper knowledge, a deeper knowledge on C sharp versus C plus plus than that. Yeah. Else, right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't have to deal with pointers or memory allocation or stuff right. like that. All right. Very cool. And what about the uh, in, in terms of the graphical capabilities in Unity? 
did you feel like they were going to give you the best result yeah, for the definitely yeah. definitely because you can do anything in, in, in that engine you can do first person shooters you can do a sandbox a big uh real time uh, not real time role playing game so you can do practically everything what you can in unreal so i yeah. wasn't afraid of doing that and on the other hand you also have a ton of uh, assets which you can buy 3d models of, of tanks and and vehicles and infantry so i don't have to do that mm -hmm. from scratch i can buy them in, right. in a bundle in big packages and use them and that really took off with that both graphical assets and sound effects i could really uh, be much faster the only thing that misses uh, is missing from all these engines still missing is ai AI algorithms, which are being developed. And I think that in a couple of years, you will have good AI platform, which can be just plugged in those games. Mm -hmm. And that will shift all these strategy games yeah. to a whole new level. So most of my time lately is just uh, programming AI, how to make computer play smarter <clears throat> against human. Not only right. smarter, but more like some human opponent would. Yeah. And right. that is one of the keys of success of, of games like this. How does the <clears throat> so that's something I I I'm, I started doing some research a, a few years back on the Google AI engine that I thought was open platform. Are you able to use things like that to uh, sort of either lift code out of that and use it, or are you? Yes, uh, you can. You you yeah, have yeah. A, a TensorFlow. Yeah. You have some other libraries, but it's all still in 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 a kind of a research phase. Right. It's not like a thing you can plug in, and put some code, and you're off. No, you really can't. So, but in a in a years to come, just think about it. All these games, all these beautiful games, and new games which will come to to the computer platforms, will have really advanced AIs. And just think, because most of us really play, uh, most of us really play solo games. Sure. Because sure. it's hard to find an opponent. And if you could really find a good AI opponent, that would be worth uh, its, its value in gold, really. Yeah, because I, I find with most of the, <clears throat> excuse me, with most of the games that I play, the, the solo PC games, well, not solo, but when I play them solo, you play against the AI, the first thing you do is you look for the the hacks on the AI, right? So how do I, what what what's, what does the AI do every time, right? What, what, what is the, what's the trick to beating them to get across the river or to do this or do that? And then, then you end up playing the AI hack versus playing the war game, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And that is, and I, so, I totally understand where you're coming from with with uh, AI development. That like the TensorFlow stuff. I've seen some of the um, book writing. You know, they're trying to get them to write books, or I've seen little apps that come out that are supposed to be like your your friend. Tell me, tell me about your feelings, type of stuff. But after two questions, it loses its memory, or three questions, it loses its memory, and it doesn't uh, doesn't work, right? It it just makes yeah. no sense. No sense. So. Um, we do have one question here. So put that up. So, what, what else did you need in, to start the development? Was one of the questions. That, that well, the C sharp uh, was needed for programming, and uh, apart from that, you need art some art knowledge because i did the map i did all of the units and textures so you need to have knowledge about using uh, um, i use mostly adobe adobe tools like uh, illustrator or photoshop or something like that right. and you also needed uh, knowledge of uh, sound processing so you can do sound effects so you can mix music and you need to know something about algorithms and uh, not only ai but um, how to calculate uh, formations, movement, uh, trigonometry, stuff like that. You you need to know something about history because um, because <clears throat> this is a war game, so it needs to adhere to the principles of a war game. You need to know your orders of battle and unit histories and campaign histories, mm -hmm. so you can compare those and see if the game fits, if the results of the game fit into the historical events or not. Because yep. this is not just some another jump jumping game this needs to have some authenticity to it so you practically need to do almost everything possible if you are in my position of an indie developer it's not just coding it's practically everything 
and right. and since the last week i need to also deal with marketing and sales and making uh, announcement trailers and, and 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 blogs and whatnot right yeah so. yeah so so that that's interesting uh you use the word jumping game which I, I i call it the bunny hopping games right so the call of duty and you know modern warfare and all these games that you you press space bar to jump right and you yeah. bunny hop and bounce around a map I, I lost interest in first person shooters when all that stuff yeah. started to happen i i was back uh, i was back in the day with the old uh Operation Flashpoint, right? You know, it's like oh, it's really <laughs> yeah, it's right? really old. <laughs> I started yeah. with the first the first Medal of Honor back in two thousand. Yeah, yeah, and right, Quake right. and 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 Doom, Doom. Yeah, yeah, Doom. Well, Doom was the first real PC game. And I Castle played. Wolfenstein and stuff like yeah, that. Exactly, yeah, exactly, exactly. <clears throat> so um, and Serious Sam, yeah, from Croatia. <laughs> yeah, right. There you go. There you go. So. Um, well, okay. So why don't we why don't we have a little look at sure. some like let's pop the screen uh, some code up on the screen and, and check out uh, maybe have a, I don't know how you want to walk through but look at maybe can, if we look at the orders of battle look at the uh, map and let's talk about the you know, texturing and stuff like that. Uh, John, no, this is uh, <clears throat> this John. We're talking about a, a new game, uh, War in Africa. Uh, that is going to be uh, a digital PC game, uh, and well, let me uh, let me just bring it up. Uh, just, to, just, bring it up. just a second. Uh, <coughs> this is a Unity engine. I'm going to go from a debug window, so it's still in development, of course. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. If yeah, we encounter any bugs, that's normal. Well, hey, and, look. Uh, yeah, so, so let me just uh, preface everything. So, guys, what we're doing here. Uh, so with Thomas Love, I said, hey, look, let's let's get online and have a chat and talk about the game and the development, knowing that it's, you know, I, I, I beta might be, uh, alpha might be a better, or mature alpha, or would you call it early beta? <laughs> right? I would call it early beta. Early beta, okay, so. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, great, okay, so, so with that construct in mind, what that means is that things go wrong and things break and me being an ex tech guy, if there's if there's not a crash in the demo, then it's not a good demo. So uh, let's uh, <laughs> let's let's have a, dude, just, just Well, I, I don't really <laughs> think it will crash, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If it if it does, it's okay. Let's not let's not worry about it. So. Uh, what, yeah, let's have a look. Let's show, dude, walk us around a little bit and we'll talk Okay, about so it. what we have here is uh, main main screen. So we have uh, option to play scenario. This is a scenario screen. As you can see, currently we have uh, 15 scenarios and I think we'll go into the release uh, with 15 scenarios. I will also probably uh, make available scenario editor in the later stages so that people can do their own scenarios because the the map is great, is big one from uh, El Aguila to Suez Canal. So you practically can do your own scenarios later on and oh, even program cool. your own AI. Yeah. But when, when the game gets released, it will go out with three uh, with 15 scenarios and three campaigns. And later on, when I have enough time to finish the scenario editor, I will make that available as well, probably, because it's a good thing. Uh, the scenarios are mostly historical and there are four for speculative non-historical scenarios. Um, as you can see, I've tried really to encompass all of them. The only one missing, there was only one missing, and that is uh, Marsa Matruch in 1942. Uh -huh. That is, I think, in July when the uh, when Tobruk fell in 1942 and the British started moving backwards. They made a stop at... Uh, Marsa Matruch trying to stop the Germans for a while and it only lasted for a one day, two days of battle and, and Germans pushed through to the El Alamein line. Yeah. I didn't include Marsa Matruch just because if I did include it, I would need to increase the number of scenarios drastically because of the way my campaign works. Campaign is practically a series of, of 
connected scenarios. You go from one to another. And if I added another one like Marsa Matruh in there, I would need to add five new scenarios. And that would take a lot of time to develop. So the only one missing is that one. All the others are here. So you have Zonenblume, that's the initial Rommel's offensive. Easter battle is one of the battles during the siege of Tobruk. Mm -hmm. That's practically the first bigger attack on Tobruk fortress uh, at the ear really early stages. This is before the fight for Razel Madaur, uh, a salient. Then we have Brevity, Scorpion, Battle X. Then we have two speculative ones. What if the Germans succeeded in, in, in pushing through to Alamein in 41 and to Cairo to 1941? Ah. Then we have Operation Crusader, my probably favorite one. Then we have Second Rommel's Offensive. Then again, one speculative one. What if the Germans succeeded in getting to Alamein in, in early 1942? Then we have Battle for Gazala Line, his masterpiece, as they say. Yes. Then we have First Alamein, Alam Khalfa, speculative one. What if the Germans succeed in pushing through to Cairo in 1942? And finally, Second Alamein. Wow. Each of these, each of these is very carefully studied for 10 years, probably, because if you look at Access History Forums, I was very involved back then in 2011 and trying to make an order of battle uh, at the battalion level for, uh, for the battle of, uh, for the Crusader operation which wasn't okay. so available at that time. Today, you have beautiful website, uh, Rommel's Repost or Project Crusader, which has all the information you need. But back then, it wasn't anything like that available. So all of these I've studied to a great detail because I wanted really this game to be made like a true war game. So that can, you can, if you play uh, to the historical uh, 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 events, you can reconstruct the operation and have similar results. And practically, you can try different strategies, different approaches. Do you have any question or should I go on? Yeah, no, hang on. Let me, so let me ask you a quick question. So with, with the research, uh, uh, or maybe it's a more of a comment, uh, it's funny how with, re with research in games where you spent so much time on forums trying to understand what the orders of battle were and things of that nature and then <clears throat> you know five or six years go by and next thing you know not only do you have the unity engine available that allows you to do so much more faster be more productive and but i have wife and two kids as well now <laughs> yeah, uh, well yeah the wife and two kids so that's that's kind of like the uh that's the thing that pulls you back and slows you down right yeah <laughs> But you get the productivity out of Unity Engine, so it's kind of funny. But but the history also has become better researched, and there's more books, and there's more documentation online, and so that that's interesting. Did you find that you, when you saw these new resources, that you found things that you had been missing, or that you were pretty much up to date and okay with the, with your research? But I'm really up to date. Um, you reach a point when uh, reading every new book really doesn't give you any new information. It gives you some bit different point of view, but most of the information you already know from previous books. Yeah, and gotcha. for me, for me, one of the best ones, one of the first ones was of uh, Thomas Jens about the, the tank combat in North Africa. His wonderful book, but it only... Uh, encompasses a, a period from Zonenblume to, I think, Brevity, just before Crusader. And then afterwards, Barry Pitt's books. And Barry Pitt was really an excellent read. Oh, yeah, he's great. Yeah, yeah great. Those book. two are my favorite ones, probably. Okay. Probably. So uh, looking at the strength uh, uh, assessments on the left hand side, uh, it's pretty interesting because uh, you look at the disparity uh, in some of the battles it's pretty pretty marked right uh at guns uh tanks number of tanks per side now of course there's there's quality issues there that you got with the with the italians but uh nevertheless uh it, it market difference there and then but but foot slog is uh, pretty pretty close in a lot of these when you look at the siege of tobruk uh, look at Gazala, for instance. Yeah, let me see that. Let me 
Yeah, look at oh, that. There's one, one caveat uh, which must be said. When you look at the numbers, first of all, it's not easy to express the actual numbers because if you look at, uh, for instance, Battle of Gazala, uh, <clears throat> Allies, Allies also had uh, almost all the time during this campaign a certain number of units, divisions, brigades in yes. preparation, in, in training. As you know yes. from, from OCS Deck 2, you always have some units in those boxes where they are preparing in the Delta, they are training. Exactly. So these yeah. numbers can be greater. And also when you um, I tried to show only the combat personnel and because in some of these books when you read them when you read about the actual numbers of units you get not only not only ah Graziani yeah how to fail in North Africa uh, you um, I tried really to show the actual combat number of units and they are not always uh, numbers are not always agreeing on each and every book you read. So gotcha. what I did, I tried to find some middle number and try to aim for that number in my game. And these numbers you see are not taken from the book. They are actually calculated uh, in the way that I used every unit from, from the game and multiplied the number of companies with the average number of, 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 uh, of troops in each company. And that's how you get the number of troops and so okay. on. Okay. 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 That's good to know. Uh, Wardrobe has, uh, uh, Todd has a question here. So how do you decide between using simple unit markings versus graphic representations? Well, I guess we'll get to that in a sec when we get into the game. Let's, have, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's keep, so, uh, so I was, that was a good explanation of the strength uh, stuff. Um, so the I'll, strength I'll, will will definitely vary from the historical yes. records, uh, <clears throat> but I try to be as close as possible gotcha. to the numbers which I think were true combat numbers of, of the yep, troops. Combat available. effectives. Yep, yeah, combat effectives. Right. And then so side. Uh, so obviously I can play both sides and have multiple difficulty uh, levels. Yeah. This is a, a single player. You can also play all these scenarios in uh, multiplayer. But oh. I won't. Uh, I won't create a, a server now. But uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm using a Steam servers. So it's uh, available 24 hours a day, uh, oh, that's depending cool. on the availability of the Steam servers. You can chat in this chat room, find a player. And if there are not enough players, we will use forums of the game to set up uh, games uh, and say, I want to play tomorrow at 5, who's for it? People will connect oh, and play okay. here. So each of these scenarios can be played as a multiplayer as well. And oh, also you have a campaign. I'll click a campaign button. Yeah, please. This is a, a campaign screen, main screen. And my idea is to show these arrows you see as you progress from one battle to another, a new arrows will appear. Gotcha. You know, like is in, in those old historical books with, with uh, crossed swords uh, <laughs> where each battle was. And you could just uh, point over your mouse and you'll see the number of casualties for that battle and some statistics. And Roger that's how that. we'll, the campaign will be. And also, you can play a campaign in single player and multiplayer. If you have someone with whom you can spend hours of playing this game, play a whole campaign with him. Fantastic. Well, so uh, I didn't realize it was multiplayer as well. So that means yeah. we're going to have to do another session. And we'll have to play once it's uh, once we're once you're ready to. Yeah, definitely. Playing. Okay, definitely. Good. So, so let's let's um so let's go back to one of the scenarios. And so well, I let's choose. Uh, yeah. well, you choose one. No, no, it's good. Let's. Why don't we grab? Uh, well, you you pick one. You know what's the most stable, right? I love <laughs> no. Each one is stable, but I love yeah, the shader. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's let's have a look at this. Uh, this step into the gameplay, and we'll have a look and and. Uh, if we can get a feel for, I, I what I saw from the trailer, I like the uh, the war game feel of the, the the setup and the yeah here we go yeah so uh, these uh, scrolling speeds and uh, game speeds and zoom speeds will be all adjustable in the op in the options. I've increased the zoom in zoom out speed and scroll speed because right. it suits me because I'm developing. But if yeah. you want it to scroll slower. 
I'll do it in the options so you can choose. So right. what we have now is the battle preparation screen where you can, as an attacking force, you can uh, choose to redeploy your forces differently. You can drag them, you can drag them in a, in a formation and, and drag them anywhere you like. Uh, and this uh, I wanted to do because many of the games only put you in certain predefined positions. And yes. I wanted that the attacker has the ability to shift his forces differently, but mm -hmm. only to a certain degree, because if you want to be true to the historical events, you will play as originally defined. But if you don't want it, you can... I don't know, put 7th Armored Division not on the left flank, maybe on the right flank, or put the, the New Zealanders on the left flank. I don't know. Uh, and after you finish this battle preparation screen in which you can redeploy your troops, you start the game with a button. This, what you see now, is a debug screen. I will turn it off. Yeah. So this okay. is it. Let's zoom in. How does it work? Well, each of these units represents, usually represents one battalion. So for instance, this is eight Hussars. You can see it right here. Eight okay. Hussars, a member of 4th Armored Brigade. Gotcha. These are the factors, and everybody who plays a war game knows these factors. So this is attack value three, defense value three, and movement, movement allowance 10. And nice. this superscript here is a combat uh, factor against uh, armed vehicles, against tanks and against other armored vehicles. So <clears throat> it works just like any other war game. The higher the attack value, the, the stronger that unit is in, in the... in the Thank you, thank you, Scott Blanchett. Uh, for instance, these numbers are white. Uh, the red one uh, means that this is a mechanized value. So five <laughs> means this is the strength against tanks. Five is practically that puny, uh, was it two pounder gun on a Crusader tank or whatever. Yeah. And uh, three is the uh, attack value against infantry. That is uh, uh, machine guns and such. This red number three is a defense value, which is based on the primarily on the thickness of the tank's armor and its uh, penetration stopping ability at I think 500 or 600 yards. Yep, yep. And the red one means that it is a tank. If it was, for instance, where is infantry? If it was in white color, that would mean it uses a, a infantry combat results table. And this red one uses a, a tank armored combat, combat yep. results table. Yep. And this number 10 means that it moves very fast. It moves 10 hexes per hour, 10 hexes per hour on a clear terrain. So you could easily calculate when you move, when you start the game, and it will take around one hour to, to move 10 hexes. And each hex is, I think, approximately four kilometers in range. Okay. Four kilometers. And what's um, the, is there a uh, turn cycle or is it real time? It's in real time. When you press pause, like now, then yeah. you select a group, and this is a Fort Armored Brigade, and you click, and it starts moving. Right. And it moves in real time. See? And you can, for instance, order each battalion individually with clicking, or you right. can click and drag where you want it to go. Mm -hmm. And you can select not the whole brigade, you can select just a part of a brigade, stuff like that. Uh, the thing I see as the best best um, value you get from these kinds of games is the way they look, the feel of fight. Because when the tanks start rolling and when the situation begins to happen, the situation happens without you initiating each and every move. Yes. You order your units and then you sit back and watch how the situation develops, and then you change the situation. Then you redeploy your troops, put in the reserves and stuff like that. For instance, and one thing that I also want to say, as you can see here, this is 70th Infantry Division defending the Tobruk Fortress. Now, I will do a little bit uh, pimping up, up of these graphics of the fortresses. These are the fortress tiles. 
and I will just increase them so that these infantrymen can really stand in these trenches on their uh, feet. Gotcha. Okay, right. Yeah, but as right. you can see, 70 infantry is uh, one uh, formation, Fort Indian is another one, second New Zealand, the first South African, Polish Brigade, 22nd Guards, and then you have separate brigades because as it's been shown, most of these brigades, especially the brigades of the armored divisions, were used right. separately, not yeah. as a, a division, yeah, were not up until the second yeah. element. They were used yeah. separately as individual brigades. As you know, you played the Ariete uh, and Battle of Birel Gubi, which was, uh, was it 22nd or, or, or 7th, which one of these armored brigades, they were sent as a separate formation and they were far away from the rest of their division. So that's what I did in my game. I separated them in separate groups while I've kept together New Zealanders and these bigger bigger divisions because mm -hmm. they are more slower, more, mm -hmm. more cumbersome than these ones. And it depends on the scenario. When you get to the second Alamein, uh, in the second Alamein, each and every one of them is... Uh, an individual division because Montgomery wanted them to fight as divisions and that's how in that scenario I did it. I did it as a, as a big divisions. So let's move on. Um, you have the Air Force. Uh, I'm just redoing these small icons of the units. You can see you have five airport air, airfields each mm -hmm. airfield has a certain capacity here you can zoom in on double clicking and i didn't want this game to be just clicking uh, of the air force so what i did i increased the um, i reduced the amount of units available so that my air units do not represent squadrons but higher formations like air wings because I didn't want people to use too many air units during the game that would make the game too, I don't know, chaotic. Right. So by increasing the, the strength of each unit and the size of each unit, I reduced the number of clicks but retained that, that value of the Air Force. So for instance, here, uh, let's, let's move a bit forward with this 7th Armored Division. And we should pretty much ram into a Recam a reconnaissance group of Corpo di Amata di Manovra in front of Saleh. They have some reconnaissance unit in front. And let's speed up the game. So if you are a slow player, you slow down. Oh, there's a reconnaissance plane somewhere here. <laughs> it is flying yeah. reconnaissance oh, cool. my, yeah. my position. Um, Ah, here are the Italians. So, how does the fight look? These are the... Now, look at this. I'll pause a bit. Yeah. See yeah. this one. This arrow uh, shows uh, how much damage the unit does to another unit. Now, how do I calculate damage? This is very interesting. When you have turn-based game, uh, uh, you practically... Uh, sum up all of the attack values and all of the defenders' values and make a ratio. Uh, so it's uh, odds based ratio combat results table. And you look at the column and then you shift the column left or right based on the type of the units of the terrain, on the dice roll. On the dice roll, you, you, you choose the row. Yeah. What's the difference here? Uh, I wanted, first of all, to have unit strengths. I didn't want a unit to be represented with a unit counter, but with a number of unit models, like vehicles. For instance, this is a Crusader, I think Crusader 3 tank. And this is Italian uh, ABR Auto Blinda 41 uh, vehicle. So I wanted people to see this. And each one of these vehicles or tanks represents one company, one troop. So, for instance, British have here two two battalions and those are eight Hus hussars and third royal tank regiment so practically what they have here is three troops of eight hussars and three troops of third royal tank regiment which is 48 tanks around approximately 48 plus 48 there are, there are around 100 tanks here so each one of these is one company or one troop representing around 16 tanks yep. i wanted to show that I yeah, also that's... wanted to show the morale. Um, when you fight, your morale drops. 
uh, the morale is shown as this green line underneath each unit. The amount of morale you lose is the amount of damage you have sustained. Uh, the more the damage you get in one hour, the faster the morale will drop. And when the morale drops to zero, your unit is routed. You lose control over the unit and it starts routing towards his base without right. your control. Right, and there's a it, reform, right? Yeah, yeah. And it uh, recovers very, very slowly. Tomorrow, the unit will become available, but not all of its morale will be recovered. And uh, this is not only, this green line is not, not only showing the morale, but also the combat stress. When the unit moves, uh, it, it uh, becomes tired, it loses its effectiveness, and so also this uh, green line reduces. So practically, this green line shows morale and combat effectiveness in one. And it is the single most important thing in this game. You right. try during the game to, as fast as possible, reduce the enemy's green line to zero and make him go to route. Yes. Because in this campaign, you had a vast territory and relatively small amount of units. So you can't really surround them effectively. Units usually can pull out from the fight if they want you right. can you can see in battle of gazala when they were they were uh, uh, almost destroyed the garrison from bir hakim successfully uh, escaped german german encirclement and later on uh, that also happened with the the i think was it 50th infantry division at the line of gazala as well they went they went westwards to the south, and then they pulled out from the encirclement. So let's play it a bit. Let's see yeah. how this goes. I put in this unit, and this is the amount of damage they do. Ah, he ran away, and so on. But you don't need to click as much. You just press it and let them do their fight, and you look at certain other parts of the sector. For instance, Fort Armored, or you can select them all like this. Just oh no, select, come on these ones and say you go there right and they start moving you can use roads as well for instance i've programmed my ai so it recognizes are we close to the road and if we are just move on the road and then they move faster you have two types of roads you have good asphalt road via balbia the only yeah. one yeah. and you have those desert tracks which have well they have some influence to their movement, yes. not much, but yep. some. Uh, what else? What else? What else? We have artillery here. Yeah, but so let's I push. Let's see if we can push a few units into uh, combat so we can see the combat results. And I got a question here from Brian. Well, actually, so first of all, uh, folks are wanting to know: can can you pause and and execute orders or? Yes. If, yes. Yeah, okay. I've paused so, it now. So, you can yeah, do so, this and this, and I'm pause. Right, right. So it's real. You can choose the speed. The slowest speed currently is times four. Four means that one second of real time is is uh, four seconds in the game. Right. I can go up to two hundred and and uh, this is debug. I can go to eight thousand if I want to, but it will probably go from around four to two hundred and fifty six. Gotcha. So you can choose your pace. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Okay. Yeah. So I think that answers that question. And then, of course, <coughs> people want to print out the uh, print out the rule book and see the. Yeah. yeah. I was. I wanted to say this. I was meaning of making a, a standard war gamers rule book for this game, so that people I know war gamers they want to know how the game works, not only to play it, yes. of course. Yeah. So I intend to describe all of these mechanisms in a true war gamers style in a rule book, so they can print it out and and read it before playing on during playing oh, that's cool and in, in in two variants one variant would be a printout and second variant would be something like a wiki page so you can uh, click uh, the links right. and read on right. your tablet right. or something so you can print out or read on your tablet whatever you like nice it's bombing me now ah oh, damn right so let's look at Second Alamein, there will be more action there. Where is it? Second Alamein, British attack, all right. Uh, 
Yes, uh, axes units are uh, usually divisions or Kampfgruppen, defend, Kampf depending yeah. on the depending on the situation. For instance, in Battle Axe and Brevity, you have several Kampfgroups, and in in uh, scenarios like Gazala, you have uh, divisions as 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 it was historically, 15th Panzer, 21st Panzer, and so on. It actually depends on the scenario. Not only that, uh, when I release the game and you get the scenario editor, you can make your own scenarios. You can make your own scenarios. You can change my scenarios, make some tweaks to it, whatever you like. So this is second Alamein line. Units are divisions. And on the north, you have a bunch of them, as you can see, yeah, crammed yeah, yeah. in this little space. So it's... 51st infantry and you have the highlanders there you have the the south africans you have the new zealanders mm. and you have the ninth australians on the north at tell el asa and the first thing is the breaching Mind of the field. minefield since yeah. this is second alamein you get that breaching of the minefield during the night you get 10 yeah. breaches and that's what i'm gonna do this represents the operations during the night and this is it and i can redeploy units to a second to these positions -la 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 -la. yeah i'm going to start now yeah and unpause and i'm going to do some artillery preparation they are fighting since this is a big scenario it will be frame rate will drop a little bit but later it will be optimized and let's add some artillery support from this 51st Highland and maybe from the 7th Medium Artillery Regiment and maybe some air support from Blenheims. Yeah, let's do their strikes. And what you'll see here, they are taking off. And it takes some time for them to take off and to fly there. Oh, that's right. so cool. So you don't just click uh, airstrike and then... And, uh, no, you, you need to <laughs> take time. And what can happen <laughs> also if the enemy uh, captures your airfield, uh, oh. he can destroy the, the, uh, the planes there. So you need to take care of uh, retreating those units if the enemy is too close. That is great. And I wanted to say something about supply. Supply is also very important in this campaign, of course. Uh, supply has a separate screen. I think the number is F2. This is a supply view. Now, just a second. In the standard, ah, let's see a little bit of bombing. Yeah, let's watch the uh, a little bit of the combat and then let's have a look at the supply after that. All right. I'm going to add some more yeah. animation here. Sure, it looks sure. so right right now, but in, I'm, and, and can you hear the sounds? Uh, I can, uh, can't hear the sounds, unfortunately. Uh, just a second. I think I can share that. Share. Uh, oh, it looks like you're getting bombed now, too. Here we go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Germans! <laughs> oh, no, this is a recon plane. This is a recon. So, what I wanted to show, a space button. Uh, if you order units to move, I will add one overview screen which will be above all of this, which would enable you to see the whole battlefield in one screen. So you can get the overall situation in one view. So you have these detailed views when you zoom yes. in, then this bigger view, operational view, and then you'll have another strategical overview, the big one. Gotcha. Gotcha. And then on, on the button of space, you see all the units and their movements like for instance, I'm going to uh, order this one to go. And when you click space, you get everything. See? And you have also a supply view. Look at this. As you can see, all of these units on the north are supplied from this depot in Alamein. And these on the south are supplied from this supply depot here. So what you have is the... Uh, estimated time of arrival for supplies. When you zoom in at the unit in supply view, like this tank unit, you see that its supply path starts from the supply depot and goes to the unit. And on it, you see a number, one and two hours. That means that the unit will be resupplied in one hour. And two hours is its round trip time, uh, time for the next resupply phase. 
The farther the unit moves, the further the unit moves from its supply depot, that resupply time increases. So in some scenarios like Zonenblume or, or, or Gazala, uh, because you move very far away from your forward supply depots, that time increases rapidly to like 10 hours. And um, I've said that the units lose the fuel for, I don't know, four hours of movement, it needs to be refueled, or 10 hours. So if you get very, very far, you will have eventually to stop. And that is the main mechanics which prevents you to go very far because the units need to stop. And they also, as you can see, they use up their supplies. Look at here. This is the amount of ammunition. Mm, it's already four, reduced right. to two uh -huh. from the initial load of four. And since it's not moving, it's not using any fuel. I didn't include food. I didn't want to include Italian pasta rule or something uh, because uh, you don't need to. You don't yeah, need to. Yeah. Uh, you can really force the enemy uh, to surrender if it uh, loses its uh, ammunition. So adding right. another supply like food became unnecessary. I really didn't want to be cumbersome with these these supplies and use only the ones necessary to show that mechanics yeah on the compass definitely definitely all right so let's see uh let's see a little bit of this uh, uh see action. this 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 yeah. unit this unit is routed and it now begins to move move away and when it moves away i will try to take the position at Miteria ridge but what happens the ai is good and recognized it and he pulls in 1st Battalion of the 65th Regimento Motorizzato to take its place before I can take it. All right, yeah, reserves or adjustment of the line. Yeah, yeah. okay. So that's what AI will do. And that's what I will do in the following months, tweaking that AI to do it as best possible. Yeah. Uh, but also to give some, some AI levels so that you can tweak it for yourself. So I didn't capture it. He took it and then I must continue the attack. So maybe I'll pull some more fire from the New Zealand artillery. What happened here? Aha, uh -huh. Australians attack, but without any support. I haven't given them any artillery or, or, or air attack. So they were destroyed by the forward units of the whoa, whoa, 164. Whoa, whoa. Tom, Tom. You I'm sorry about that. <laughs> it's not because the of them. It's because... run away when the host is the Australian, bro. That's not how it works. <laughs> well, I'm going to give them some artillery support then now. Oh, look For instance, at all these Italians oh, okay. and 69th ran. medium regiment. And they ran from and the maybe Italian. some air attacks with the Baltimore bombers. There we go. Let's track this fire. Get back in there, boys. There is trying to crunch the Italians because look at this they are their morale is low and they are yeah. disorganized when you fire an artillery barrage on enemy it reduces his combat ability a bit but it also redu uh, makes him disorganized and what it does it uh, it uh, really reduces his attack value and now he's routed as it should be and here come the bombs yeah. to finish him off yeah uh, very nice oh okay. <laughs> Uh, this is cool. Okay, he's going away somewhere. It's a recon. Uh, I've programmed the AI to wait in this scenario until it really gets hot, until he realizes where is the main effort, and then to use all of his uh, air attack assets on that point. Mm. So that's why he doesn't use this situation. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. so Maybe I could point. split Australians and try. No, I can't because zone of control prevents me to move from one uh, zone of control to another, like another. in any other Hex and Counter War game. So I need to destroy this German as well before attacking this one. Ooh, ah, hey, I have shifted in the, yeah, the reinforcements are here, so I can't punch through. Now that's so let's see guns. what's happening no, here. Yeah, okay, that's interesting. Okay, carry on. Uh, he has defeated the New Zealanders, and I need yeah. to pull in more units. Well, so that's to be expected, right? So the Kiwis, we, we can expect that from the Kiwis, but not the others. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. And maybe, maybe, wait, 
how about showing you a bit of Gazala? Because there I can show you tanks against tanks. Yeah, let's do a little tank battle. Yeah, cool. Uh, Gazala, 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 Gazala. That's the dynamic part of the game which I'm talking about. Gazala is also extremely interesting. But Crusader is much more open. It doesn't mm -hmm. have this huge, huge minefield stopping the units. What I did. No, no, the British, the Germans. Just a second. Okay, keep showing people. I, I have to let a cat in. So. Yeah. Gazala, the Jerry's, right? Yeah, Steel Panthers. I tried to, to use that good old games, which I liked. And Steel Panthers and and close combat, and get some idea from them, of course. So this is 19th Light Division and 15th Panzer, and this is 21st Panzer on the southern part of Birhakim. Let's zoom in. We'll speed it up. Yep. Mm, faster. Uh -huh. oh, 12 Panzers, right? Will destroy them. These are the Spy Panzer Pylogen. They will be dealt with swiftly if they don't retreat. And so the, yeah. uh, the that red, that uh, multicolored arrow is giving you an indication of what the relative strengths are. Is that the way that's working? The out? loss, the loss. Well, each the uh, loss, each uh, rectangle is five, I think, yes, five morale per hour. So you have two four six eight nine morale per hour that's nine times five morale 45 okay. he destroys 45 enemy morale per hour and if you look at here above you see the actual number 42 okay and why is it 42 you get this display meaning the uh pencils have attack value of six you can see it here it's six uh, minus four is the defense value of the 12 lancers and plus one is the die roll. Die roll plus all other modifiers. If they were on some uh, gotcha. some fortress, it would be less. And I have combat results table in the background, which uses that number to, to calculate the actual number. And it becomes 42. So they are retreating. They are still in good order. Morale is good. But they realize they're going to be pummeled. So they are retreating. And I'm continuing my advance. So let's move further just just go on right yeah 19th light yeah i'm gonna speed up a little bit oh he's bonging me first pencil right move on again he runs away all right <clears throat> So it really is kind of a screening effort that uh, that they're putting up there, right? Yeah. There was one another brigade. I think it was an Indian brigade forward deployed, and it also fell back to the position. AI has been really, really uh, play-tested here in Gazala because Gazala was probably one of the most complicated uh, battles. It took a month, uh, 30 days or so, to, to, to do all that to try to make the, the right hook and then be stopped. And then the Germans and Italians fell back here, destroyed the brigade here, opened a minefield here. I mean, a ton of things happened. Yeah. And all the while, the British and Commonwealth forces tried to stop them, attacking them here, 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 here. <laughs> ah, here are the troops of the 3rd Indian Motor Brigade coming to help them. All right. And here... Just move, move guys, don't stop. 90th light, slower units are falling back. The faster units like 580 reconnaissance up to Elung is the first one. Ah, here are the tanks, Jesus. And that's the good thing about the these games, you can have a true fog of war. These light hexes are the ones I see. The dark ones, I do not see. So I can use my reconnaissance units or I can use airplanes. I have reconnaissance airplanes like this. Was it Caproni or something to reconnaissance, for instance, this area? Mm -hmm. And now it will. Where is it? Ah, it's up there. It will fly and, and show me the situation. OK, I have some 88s here firing at the second Hussars. But that's not enough. 
I have the second one here. Excellent. I'll put another one here, right? And I'll slow down. If the player is a bit slower, slow right. down as much as you like. Right. I like to play faster because I'm used to play. I'm gonna I was playing this for two years now. So put some infantry here. And that's the combination. See this one. Those yellow yellow fuel cans means they are very low on fuel. They have these German tanks only one of the eight available. So mm -hmm. very soon they will be out of fuel. And if I don't if I don't open some other supply lines, they will be stopped. Mm -hmm. And the farther they go in, the less fuel they will have. Okay. Now let's bring in some bombing from the Savoia Marchetti and the AI is really reinforcing here. Yeah. And I'm gonna use Rotonda Segnali with some Stukas to tag here. And maybe some other Stuka and Junkers 88 to tag here. Now let's see how this develops. Where are the Air Force? Ah, uh -huh, they are coming. You can see them. Oh yeah, look at that. This is Bir Hakim with the French French Brigade. Right. Let's see what uh, airplanes can be really uh, a decisive factor in some of these situations. When combined with the good allocation of anti-tank units, you can really punch a line. Not enough, not enough. Ah, this one will fall soon. All right, and the second one will fall as well. This is the 90th light. Now, what can you do? You can punch them in the flank. But the problem is they are very low on fuel, as you can see. Right, right, right. Yeah, they can so you will long. need to wait for additional two hours before mm. they get resupplied they can move but very slowly right so so this is part of the part of the excellence of the, of the concept here is it's not just grabbing the units and running all over the place you've got logistical constraints built in I also just yeah. a second i've also added something else and that is um supply boost supply boost mechanics is uh, trying to um show the German uh, uh, flexibility regarding the supply. For instance, in first operation, in Zonenblume, you had the, the Rommel stripping one uh, unit of all its trucks in order to bring up fuel. So right. you can do that as well in some of the scenarios. You can do that as well. Like, inst for instance, you can do it here. I can use this unit and boost its supply. But you have limited amount of these actions available. Right. In Gazala, you have only four actions every day, and you have like 50 battalions or so. Meanwhile, on the north, the Italians are waiting, see? <laughs> and uh, what you can do, since you can uh, open minefields, you can use the Italians at the same time to do a diversion on the north, for instance. Right. You can open up a minefield and start attacking on north while attacking on the south, so that the enemy doesn't know where the real main effort is. Here's a good question, dude. Um, is there a way to collect player data uh, with a via opt-in from all uh, from from you know all the multiplayer or even from the solo play to uh, educate the AI? I wonder if that uh, that'd be interesting. Yeah, I thought about it, but there's one problem, one catch with it, and that is the two catches actually. First of all, I at this moment do not have enough resources to research that data because uh, right. if I had enough resources to use the neural networks and, and uh, deep AI engines, I could use these data to, to chunk something out. But I, I don't have the use of that data. And the other thing would be that uh, people would have to agree to it. That is a bit of invasion of privacy maybe sharing some personal players data yeah, sure. I think, I, yeah i think you all at think, least in yeah. europe with with our uh, laws that would be a bit tricky maybe yeah yeah but gdpr great idea. gdpr yeah yeah, See, yeah it's clearing I, the minefield and it will take uh, like four or five hours to clear the minefield here 
Huh. So meanwhile, what happened here? Uh, as you can see, these units are pretty much uh, used up. Oh, First almost, answer. Yeah, almost so while around. I'm going to try to take them out, but I am not sure if I can. You see these flags, small white flags, are the headquarter units. Usually, uh -huh. usually what I did, I tried to. Uh, since the division, usually German division, Panzer division had like two battalions of tanks and uh, three or four battalions of infantry units, one uh, reconnaissance battalion, and then it had artillery regiment. I didn't want to have three artillery batteries <coughs> because it would be too much artillery for player to, to use. So I'm showing artillery units as regiments. And I'm showing all of the other combat units as battalions. That is the, the best balance I get. I don't get too many units to click. Right. And I get the oomph needed from the artillery regiment. Got it. Got it. Yeah, it and like there is the difference between the British and the Germans. Uh, British have uh, uh, anti-tank regiments as uh, single units in this game. Uh, and the Germans have uh, more uh, anti-tank units. And that's primarily to, to show the different way they've used this, their anti-tank units, especially the German flak units, which are used as forward combat units very, very effectively. So okay. this is interesting. Uh, if just stop right there. Yeah, so, so you know, just to zoom in a little bit. So uh, you had a British unit... Uh, pull out and then it was reinforced by another so that and then and then your guys pull this is really interesting by the way it it's play, plays out more like a war game uh and the tacticals uh, i think pretty pretty uh comprehensive it's cool what i wanted to do uh, is just use that good old hex and counter mechanics which everybody understands and, and they have been refined for decades and put them in real time in real time world to see uh, for real how these things move out in front of you and i think oh, uh, well it's interesting and it's fun and it's realistic uh, i've played gazala many times and many times the situation developed as was historically but of course it also depends if i zoom out when will the when will the british attack let's change the sides now and this is the British side, as you can see. Ah, it's going darker. It's it's end of the day. I'm going to pause before it ends. See the British line. It's completely routed. All these battalions with the red rectangles have mm. been routed. And they will recover tomorrow morning, but they will have reduced morale and effectiveness. It usually takes them two or three whole days until they reach the the morale and effectiveness which was there before the engagement but you can use them tomorrow with lower efficiency if you want to and also you can see these airfields some of the units are damaged some of the airplanes uh, air units are maybe even destroyed some of them are reloading you can look at the the losses mm. you can see the casualties for the first day uh, the british have lost 200 tanks and the German Italians 100 tanks. Uh, that signifies the difference between the use and the combat value of the British tanks at that time, at that right. position. Uh, also, Germans have used flak units to that effect, which British didn't. And as well, what's interesting to say, uh -huh, uh, you have also a recovery mecha mechanism. Not all of these tanks are destroyed they yes. have been immobilized but tomorrow the next day and the day after some number of those tanks will return to battle yeah that they was a big be, factor yeah, yeah that yeah. was a big factor in this campaign i have a question for you so there's a, a question here that in the multiplayer uh are you able to slow down the uh the gameplay in multiplayer as well so you can kind of pause yes. and look at things uh, in multiplayer games, I took the standard solution, and that is the host player chooses the speed. So uh, the players will chat at the beginning of the game and define at which speed do they want the game to play. Right. And they okay. will say, "We, I want to play on the uh, normal speed or slow speed. Right. And the host player will then set the speed with plus minus key, Perfect. and that's Perfect. it. 
Yeah, and, and I guess during, I guess also if you're communicating or you know talking, yeah, about you chat can chat with him during the play. You can say, "Oh, please slow it down," and that's it. That's how yeah. it's done usually. Yeah, yeah. Okay. One that's player, great. the host has the control of the speed. That makes sense, right? Okay, very cool. Um, well, good. Well, look, I tell you what, uh, I uh, I probably need to start winding things up, go feed family and do breakfast because it's early here and you're having lunch or you've had lunch right yeah i had lunch oh well i'm just looking at the artwork here that's cool well this is great i i it's uh so i you know what i saw from the clip and based on our conversation about the uh about the artwork and and all the rest of it and your interest in in history i uh i was um expecting it to be good but this is this is pretty awesome dude just uh, one thing for the end just one thing for yeah, the end. Sure, let sure. me show you the maps let me show you oh, the yeah, maps. yeah yeah let's do that we, we got time yeah we got time I got you. so this is a map two uh, i actually have three maps okay map two is this one hmm. it starts here at tmimi yeah you know tmimi mm -hmm. gazala this is Tobruk. Yep. This is Bardia. Bardia, yeah. Solum Fort no. Capuzzo, <laughs> half yeah. bridge. And this is Halfaya Pass, yeah. Right. And this Carpment, Sofafi. And now you get to Sidi Baran in Egypt. And, and finally to blah, 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 Marsimatruh yeah. and Geraula. So this is the map too, in which most of the fighting will be, at least for for the middle part of the game. Then we have map one. And map one is this one, big uh, boy, okay. starting from El Aguila, and then blah, 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 Mersa, Brega, Agedabia, Antelat. Here is Beda form where huh. the British destroyed the Italians in 1940, right, in Compass, and then Benghazi very yeah. important port one thing uh, ports are very important because they have big supply depots which give you that that uh, very needed uh, uh, refreshment during the operation because during sun and bloomer you go very very far from your dumps as a german and when you capture benghazi when you get that port you get those supplies then you can go hundreds of kilometers ahead right right with all that fuel and then you had jebel agdar green mountains and then here you have derna yeah derna and mckilly here it is the final focal point of that first benghazi blow handicap and now the third one my maybe my favorite because most of it isn't shown until you really win Look at this baby, this Nile Delta. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Just look at it. First of all, on the left, you have, right, Martin Bagush, Fuka, Galal Station, El Daba, Sidi Abdel Rahman, villages, small, small places, yeah. Miteria, Rueisat, well known places, Alam Khalfa Ridge. But then, if you succeed to push through, this is what awaits you Alexandria the big one look at those lakes then this river with all these bridges all these crossings and cairo cairo here yeah and if you wish my last scenario uh your goal is to capture cairo and alexandria i was thinking of even going all the way through and adding suez to it and adding Ismailia and other ports. But I figured once you capture once you capture Cairo and Alexandria, that's pretty much it. But if any of the modders would like to add his own scenario or, or change it up a little bit, why not? They will really have the chance to do it. Zoom, zoom into Tanta, Zifta. And this ground is behaving a bit differently look yeah, at all these so sure that's gonna, the movements can be really different there too uh, oh, you bad, get so the right. bridging bridging equipment but very scarce number of bridges yeah. available so you really need to choose as an axis commander where to where to make those bridges and it's very big area to cover mm. 
So Shell if you're attacking Alexandria, Alexandria on the left flank, you really can't support your attack on Cairo on the right flank. So you need to, I don't know, time your attacks or, or do them right. frontal attacks or something. It's difficult for Axis, even when they get there, to, to just cross over the Nile. It's not so easy. Yeah, but when yeah. you get there, the British are pretty much exhausted. But the Germans and Italians are exhausted as well. So there is a fine balance in those last scenarios, Cairo 41, oh. Cairo 42. It's very finely balanced and very finely tuned who can win and why. And it de depends. It's, I think it's much easier in 1941, if you can do it in 1941, than in 1942, because in 1942 they got Shermans, and Sherman tanks are great, mm -hmm. much, much better uh, combat value than the previous cruiser tanks the British had in 1941. And this is El Qatara here. This is depression. Yeah. And this is the impassable, nice. impassable yeah. sand sea yeah. area. The, sand, sea. the sea is sand. So uh, I, I'm assuming then, and uh, Wardrobe, but Todd asked this question, that you can, uh, we could apply this same engine to other theaters as well, right? This is attack at dawn. Uh, North Africa. So if it gets successful, which I hope to God it does, it's only the beginning of a series. So just think about it. Think about Tunisia, think about Italy, think about Eastern Front. <laughs> <laughs> Army Group North, Center, Army Group South, Case Blue. I mean, and um, there are so many ideas I wanted to implement in this game, but it would take me another three years to do it. So right. this first game is the core concept. And I have many other ideas in store, many other mechanics, especially on the strategy side, yeah, like headquarters, like uh, uh, spying, intelligence, because the Germans in this campaign had some intelligence, the oh, unit, which, there's some events, global events, which could be added uh, in the game. But I wanted this first one to be very good, core, interesting, fun, uh, moddable, which can be flexible with 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 an, future editions and if everything goes well this uh, series will just go on and on there are many operations which would be very nicely represented this way yeah 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 well, i can certainly see that for sure for sure this is very cool dude you're doing a great job thanks thanks any questions oh. death on the nile yeah <laughs> yeah exactly yeah yeah, well, I think, uh, you know, there's obviously there are some folks who like turn-based games and there are other folks who don't mind pausing the game and adjusting the, the, the gameplay as they go along. For me, I, I used to always like turn-based games. Uh, what I don't like is a real-time game that I can't pause and I can't adjust or slow the time down. So I think the fact that you've got the ability to pause the game change your orders, adjust, adjust to what the AI is doing or what your opponent's doing. Those type of things I think uh, make it make it flexible enough for, for both for whether for both types of players who like both both uh, both modes of play, right? Just a second. Yeah. Well about Great. about real time um I love turn-based games. I mean, most of the games I play are turn-based games. And uh, the good thing about turn-based ga turn games is that they give you time to think. And uh, that time of think, time to think is good. It, it, it's comfortable. It's comfortable. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, uh, as I said before, when I defended the idea of real-time operational level game, uh, a real-time game gives you that... I don't know, that feel in the gut, which I don't get so much with the turn-based game. From what you saw at Gazala, and, uh, and at the moment when the British came completely unexpectedly slamming into you, that's something you can't so easily recreate in, in turn-based game. For me, right. uh, for me at least, seeing it for real, in real time, when you are uh, surprised by it, is is give you such a rush, such an intensity that uh, I mean, it has to be seen. Uh, right. This is, for instance, uh, my scenario tool. You can see all of the units. Can you see the screen? Yeah. Yeah, sure. We can see it. Yeah. So you can see 
the work behind it. Tenth Armor Division, Sussex, Buffs, Staffordshire, Royal Tank Regiment, with all of the combat factors, morale value, and I have mechanisms like this for air units as well. So you can use these mechanics to change them to your liking. And this, these all <laughs> orders of battle are based on all the books I read. As I've said, not all the books agree, but there are many yeah, good books. Like yeah. Nee Hoster has a, a beautiful site on the web with the order of battle for the for the second battle of El Alamein. And I talked to Carl Funk, who is the god of <laughs> orders uh, of battle. Orders of battle, battle yeah. yeah, about where he gets his resources. Uh, I was trying to find, for instance, a second Rommel's offensive. In, in 1942, which isn't so much covered in any of the books I read. So he gave me some resources for that as well. And I tried to use the original names, Regimento Artilleria, Battaglione Autoblinda Bersaglieri, and the German names, of course, like yeah. Flak Regiment or the Panzer Regiment, Schutzen Regiment. And there is a ton of Commonwealth units. These are Australians. Right. This was their second army, 13th yeah. Australian Infantry Battalion, KIRC. There's a question here, Tom. Uh, is it possible yeah. to, start, to start the campaign game at uh, specific points or battles? Currently, no, no. Uh, you right. have three campaigns. You have yeah. uh, 1941, 1942, and uh, grand campaign covering 1941 and 1942. Gotcha. Uh, gotcha. Maybe seems like a nice idea maybe i'll take it into consideration if you have any idea please uh, contact me there is a steam uh, steam store game will be published through steam and on the steam there is a discussion forum board and if you have any questions like that or suggestions tell me and if uh, they are interesting enough i'll put them into specifications and and add them to the game gladly for instance, somebody asked me, could we use uh, uh, counters instead of these models? I said, why not? I'll add an option so that instead of these tanks firing at each other, you can see classical counters with the combat factors on them. Why not? Oh, it's not cool. a problem for me. Yeah, very cool. Well, I tell you what then, let's... Uh... Let's let's plan a, another session where we uh, actually do some play against each other. Sure. Yeah, uh, I would be glad to. We can do I that in the next few to. weeks, maybe. Uh, it's too early for that. <laughs> oh, come on. We can do it. We can, let's break it. Come on. Uh, well, we, we'll be in I'm touch. Teasing. We'll be in touch. But yeah, uh, what I also yeah, plan to do, and uh, I call people to follow me, is I'm intending first of all to write a blog, where right. I will describe, for me, some of the key operations. For instance, uh, probably Crusader or Gazala or Battle X, and I will write an article with the maps about that operation and following that article i will make a video on youtube in which i play against the ai that Perfect. same operation for instance i will give a lecture lecture about battle x in one blog and next time i will on youtube play the operation battle x against the german trying to get the same same or not the same result trying to win to see how historically accurate is the game and how much does it look like a real thing. Because for me, war game needs to, needs to get that right. Otherwise, it's not a war game. It's just a clicking show. Right, right, exactly. Well, this is awesome, dude. Thank you so much. For, Thank you. Uh, yeah, no, no, it's great. Thanks for sharing, giving everyone a look. I think, uh, I think you got a few people excited. This is great. All right, everybody. Thank you. I'm just going to uh, click the little.